Hi everybody and welcome to my channel What Kathy Thinks and I'm here today with my illustrious and awesome friend Brandy Miller and we'll be getting to the terms awesome and amazing in another video but right now we're here to talk about something a little bit more important. Um, Brandy you're on the line say hello. <laughs> Thank you for watching with us. Thank you. Brandy, we've been uh, talking for quite some time about just how blessed and amazing life is. And um, as you know, and as our viewers know, and as, as I'm sure our friends know, um, I uh, have bipolar disorder, and as such, I've... Um, suffered and been blessed to survive suicidal ideation and suicide attempts um, ever since you know I, I I think the first time that I I began I I wanted to kill myself from the time I was seven years old I I attempted I first attempted suicide when I was nine years old I didn't have the means to kill myself, and I knew I didn't have the means to kill myself when I was as young as nine, but when I was 15 and began using hard drugs, then I did have the means to kill myself, and I was unsuccessful in my attempts, and then when I was older and um, became a member of 12-step fellowships, I was told that I shouldn't kill myself, I shouldn't try to kill myself because my circumstances should change. And now recently when we've begun doing these videos on um, uh, the, the discussion between the pro-choice and pro-life camps, um, we've been hearing that you know, many women believe that um, because their financial and or emotional circumstances seemed doomed at the time, that this was a reason to terminate a pregnancy because um, uh, they were too poor or too sad or uh, just, just felt as though their circumstances were... Um, unfavorable for continuing life and yet what I heard when I was suicidal or felt like I should use drugs because uh, things were just too desperate I was told well no don't quit five minutes before the miracle happens and now what I've begun to think is well if I shouldn't have killed myself myself five minutes before the miracle happens. Why should these babies have been killed five minutes before the miracle happened? And this has become a conundrum for me. Why? 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 I mean, I'm, I'm grateful to be alive. I'm so grateful to be alive. And this has become a serious stumbling block for me. Yeah, I can understand why. I mean, I've heard women who killed their baby because the father didn't want the baby. And when I first got pregnant with my husband, he didn't want the baby either. It wasn't the baby that was the problem. He was scared he wasn't worthy of being a father. He was scared of living up to responsibility. But his viewpoint changed. But if I had gotten, you know, if I gone through and gotten an abortion, he never would have changed. You know, part of the reason, uh, we, we were homeless. Six weeks into my pregnancy, we were homeless, and I had people encouraging me to get an abortion as a means of improving our financial situation. But it was actually because the baby was coming along that we both found the courage to take the steps we needed to take to do what we needed to do to improve our lives. So I think a lot of women are giving into this idea that what is today is what is always going to be. They're making a permanent decision based on a set of temporary circumstances. Exactly. When when someone is contemplating suicide, 
if there is an opportunity to communicate with them before the act is committed and 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 God rest their souls and may they be with their father eternally in heaven um, we tell them please don't make a, a permanent solution for a temporary problem and yeah. and and it, it occurs to me now and and I'm so grateful that none of my suicide attempts were successful because I certainly attempted suicide on many a, an occasion and ended up in the hospital. Uh, Brandy, I can't even count the times that I ended in ended up in a hospital because of suicide attempts, um, and I'm so grateful that I didn't die. But I think. Well, I am too, because we wouldn't be having this conversation <laughs> today if you completed. Yeah, no shit, <laughs> no shit. And I think to myself, why is it then? that we encouraged women to have an abortion based on very temporary circumstances. Why, why do we encourage that? And, it, and, then, and then it occurred to me that I have been thinking, oh, well, rape is an okay exception. And I thought about this and I thought about, well, because it's, because the father is a despicable human being. And then I thought about how, how I felt about the father of my children. And I think, well, there are certainly some cases in which marriage is a happy ever after situation and which the mother loves the father of her children and uh, marriage is a happy union and children are a blessing to the union. And then I thought about all the instances in which that's not so and in which the children are still such a blessing i'm not really fond of the father of my children but good god i am so overjoyed that my children are in the world and then that got me thinking why rape is not an excuse for abortion. And it wasn't until this morning that I realized that. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, uh, people are focused on the negative action, but the baby isn't a negative action. The baby is a potentially positive outcome. In fact, the baby allows the woman to reassert control over her life. That's the first choice she gets to make. Am I going to let this man destroy my life? And, and the babies are so... Or am I going to take a step forward and choose to control my own destiny and, and do better than what he did to me? And even when the father, in, in my personal case, where I bear such animosity towards the father of my children and and I do still to this day though I'm working to overcome that I have to also acknowledge that um, there are cases where rape as is used in a military weapon and and it is we, we well, can yes I mean we talked about that a little bit privately but yes rape can be militarized and has been historically absolutely Genghis Khan was one of the first to publicly go on record as uh, you know that was his basically his mantra was so we'll, we'll uh, take over by forcing these women to have our children right and 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 as such you know we cannot deny that that men have used rape as a militarized weapon and and that what this and and i was talking to someone recently about this that when rape is used as a militarized weapon it demoralizes the men of of the uh conquered or um attacked nation yes or it does very it, much it, it's it, a man's inborn desires to protect his his women right sake. and so this like basically emasculates him and cuts him to the core of what he believes his purpose in life is to be 
Right. And and, and while that, all of that is true, these babies are innocent. And, yes, they are. And do we terminate the lives of these children to solve a temporary problem? And in our conversations just in these recent days, I've come to the conclusion that just as I was taught in 12-step fellowships that I should not off myself or resort to using hard drugs again, or any drugs for that matter, in order to solve a temporary problem, abortion is not the answer to a temporary problem. No, no it's not. And one of the things that gets ignored and overlooked is that when a woman is pregnant due to rape, okay, that father is a horrible human being. Let's, let's just straight out say that. <laughs> and even when it's not rape, sometimes the father is a horrible well, human be. being. Right. But the child is in the power of the mother to influence who that child becomes. It's her power to decide the future and the destiny of that child. Well, and Brandy, I'm going to... I'm going to take it a step further and say that even if the mother is not an exemplary human being, she doesn't have to be, that's for sure. She doesn't have to be. The child, once conceived, still has a right to make its own way. And that a child, once given life, and, and I don't mean once given birth, I mean, once given life, can find its own way. And I, um... Well, I think that you and I did not exactly come from happy homes. No. If somebody had killed us because we were undergoing abuse as children... Well, that would have sucked. <laughs> really sucked. I mean, I'm I... being punished for a crime I didn't commit. No, I... Was that just? It isn't. I mean, I know that as an as an abused child, and I was a severely abused child, it was part of my mission to say, I am going to make it. You are not going to stop me. I am going to rise above. That was... Exactly, and uh, it was that abuse, actually, that gave me compassion for people who were undergoing abuse. You know, yes, did it did it cause problems in my life? You better believe it. And I'm still recovering from some of the effects of that abuse. I'm still feeling some of the impact of that. But all of that is part of my package. You can't subtract that from who I became because it led me down the path that I took. And we're awesome packages. Brandy, I'm going to end this video yeah. now and we'll start a new one in a minute. And where can we find you? Where can we find you on YouTube? What's the, what's your I channel? I have a 40-day writer channel. I can also be found on Facebook. Um, I'm all over the place there, so just look so, for Brandy M. Miller 1975. Brandy M. Miller 1975 and 40-day writer, and I'm at What Kathy Thinks. And we'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Like and subscribe. It's free to subscribe, everybody. You do need to have a Gmail account and or a Google account and by the way that gives you a, a Google um, voice account which is a free phone number so there's lots of benefits to having a Gmail account and we'll talk to you guys in a little bit have a wonderful day